Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Oh, we got a big show for you tonight, folks. You're just not going to believe what's coming at you. I mean, you know, you probably don't realize. So I started thinking about this show, you know. And over the years, you probably have known, I've made a few jokes about this in a very nice way. But do you realize how much we really depend on dairy products every day? I mean, can you imagine having a baked potato without sour cream or butter? Like, no buttermilk for the biscuits? What are you going to put in your coffee, orange juice? Yeah. I bet you don't really realize the hard work that it takes to put milk on the table. Now, over the years, as I said, you've heard me say, hey, somebody's got to support the American dairy farmers, right? Yeah. For years. That's right. So tonight, I said to myself, self, self! Why don't we salute the people who make it happen? The American dairy farmers. And that's what we're going to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Hey, speaking about making it happen, Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band in the house. Speaking about making it happen, Doc Three, Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. So, we're going to salute America's dairy farmers tonight right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> guys doing all right I mean can you imagine yourself not no ice cream oh goodness <laughs> unbelievable well uh, I gotta say folks over the years as I've often joked about butter or cream about the great old somebody's got to support the American dairy farmers actually the American Dairy Association they actually sent us four true farmers dairy farmers and they're sitting right at the food bar here absolutely <laughs> Miss Rita Kennedy, now you're from Pennsylvania. Yes. And you have, how big of a farm do you have? We have about uh, 700 acres, milk about 80 cows. And 80 cows. Yes. Okay. Now, is it true that uh, what I was reading, that uh, each cow can produce about, what, seven gallons of milk a day? It's about 100 pounds, yes. 100 each pounds. Day, yes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of milk. That's a lot of milk, but it's a lot of work, too. That's a lot of work. You feed and them. you are <laughs> Bill Olive. Alum from California. That's correct. Nice to have you. And how big is your farm, sir? Well, more importantly, we milk Jersey cows. <laughs> In California? <laughs> yes. Went all the way to California to milk some Jersey cows. <laughs> I'm in New York City. I'm milking them every day, you know. How big a farm? Well, 2,000 uh, Jersey cows. We milk them three times a day. Three times a day. Yes. And uh, what is your, what's mostly the milk? being used for in your, from your farm? Cheese. Mostly cheese. California cheese. California cheese. Like I'm going to do in a minute, which I'm going to show you. <laughs> All right, Miss Donna Shop from South Dakota. Nice to, nice to have you. And how big yeah. is your farm, ma'am? We milk about 300 Holsteins. 300 Holsteins. With Those would hand. be the black and white ones, right? That's right. I, I, I grew up with them Holsteins. <laughs> have you ever cow tipped before? <laughs> I'm just I've kidding. No, oh, no, yeah. it was a joke. <laughs> I know. It was a joke, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, because... <coughs> Anyhow, I'll yeah. tell you the story oh, later. All right, you please do. <laughs> you know, okay. and rock and roll guys, you yeah. know? Uh -huh. And Grant, your last name? Kohler. Kohler. And uh, where's home? Utah. Utah, all the way from Utah. We're <laughs> delighted to have you. But you have a small farm. Well, we milk about 120 cows. So that's not too small. No. I wanted to milk a cow right on Emerald Live one time, but the big boss <laughs> wouldn't let... No, I'm serious. They wouldn't let me do it. I try to do it with a goat, too. <laughs> it's a long story. We're not going to go there. All right. Here's my little tribute, especially with a little Monterey Jack cheese. Going to make a real, real simple fondue, a little cheesy fondue. So um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add this Jack cheese. 
with this Monterey cheese. I'm going to dust it with a little bit of cornstarch. The reason why I do that, just lightly toss it, is it prevents the cheese from kind of globbing together. You don't want to do that. That's the biggest mistake that one makes. Now I've got this little fondue pot in here, as you can see. Now what we're going to do is this. I've got in here a little bit of white wine and a little garlic. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> well, it's a garlicky, cheesy sort of fondue. A little different. So, that's been simmering. Extracting the flavor of the garlic inside of that white wine. Now what we do is this. A little bit of cheese at a time. You add it all at once, it makes a mess. You gotta slowly work it. You're trying to make it really nice and velvety. I like that word. Velvety. So, how things in South Dakota? Cold? They're, they're getting to be cold. I know. Yes. We were in North Dakota last year. We went and kicked up some school cafeteria up there and huh. oh, great well. show. I saw that. You did? Yes. We froze. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like May. <laughs> so I bought my first fur coat that <laughs> that week. So a little bit at a time. Now what is the generally the milk at your farm used for? Cheese, ice cream mix. Now you, they make buttermilk from yours in Pennsylvania, yes, right? Yes, you remember that, yes. You better believe it. I try Good to obtain as much. No, I'm actually, look, I've been trying to support you guys for years. Good. If you uh, did a calculation of how much cream and butter that I use alone, <laughs> <laughs> you'd I'll probably buy times. me a truck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So slowly we're going to add this in here, okay? And it, you see how it's starting to get velvety? You got a shot of that, Buck? Good. Now, here's what we do. Right at the end, see, if you don't do it like this, it gets all stringy. Now, I'm going to keep adding this cheese in here. When we come back, I'm going to show you how you sort of fortify it with a little kirsch. And then wait till you see the garnishes that I have for my farmer friends and I when we come back. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> Emerald Lagasse here, truly making a little tribute tonight at Emerald Live for the American dairy farmers, and we're glad that you guys are here. And look, we even got your milk. You see that? <laughs> All right, look, when you're doing this fondue thing, if you uh, add the cheese, you can see sometimes because the curd, the way of the cheese, the cheese was made, it'll look like it's not right. So that's the point I'm trying to make because that's when you can get a little whisk and just sort of whisk it a little bit, and it'll start coming together. The other thing that, uh, why it does that is also because it may be too high a heat. I'm using this portable heat thing here, so you can always uh, kind of adjust that a little bit as well. Now, right at the end, I'm going to flavor it with a little bit of Kirschwasser. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh. oh, yeah. You see, and you add it at the end, that's what fortifies it. See, if we add it in the beginning and it deglazed and it evaporated, concentrated in flavor, that's called the glazing, but what we're doing here is fortifying it. So we want that little sheen, and we want that nice little flavor of the Kirschwasser. Matter of fact, the way that I like to finish mine, see now how velvety that is. See, this heat thing's a little high. <laughs> I am Batman. <laughs> now... Take a little bit of fresh nutmeg. Oh, yeah, babe. Stir it up. Now, you know, there's a lot of things. You could bring out cheese. Be a good thing, right? All kinds of cheese. 
chunk it up. That would be good. You could do, uh, you know, like strawberries, pieces of cake in there. You know, the traditional garnishes. Well, I happen to have a couple of traditional garnishes of my own. I got potatoes. I got chorizo, asparagus, blocks of ham, and mushrooms. <laughs> Why not? So then you can pick your favorite one. Shucks, you know, I go right for the pork fat. <laughs> Dip it in there. Sorry. <laughs> We're a good show. A messy one, but a good one. And there you have it. There's the old fondue, folks, okay? Made with a little bit of American cheese, okay? You guys are coming next. All right. Right down the road from you, we grow these things. Artichokes. And uh, what I want to do is I'm going to make, using yogurt, another dairy farmer thing, right? right. Highly yes. consumed. We're going to make a little marinade with, uh, with some yogurt and some p pesto. And we're going to actually marinate a little bit of swordfish. I went to the fishmonger today and happened to pick up a small steak of swordfish <laughs> that they had. Okay? Yeah. Hey, we got a big budget on the show. <laughs> big, big, man. Shh. Stay under $40 for one meal. We're there. <laughs> so we're going to actually cut it in half, and we're going to dice it into chunks. And I'm going to show you a little bit how we're going to make that later with this beautiful swordfish steak, okay? Now, that would be a... That'd be dinner and a meal and for two right there for me. <laughs> so getting back to the artichokes, what we're going to do is this. We're going to... Tourne an artichoke by cutting off the bottom, the stem, okay? And then what we're going to do is with a paring knife, we're going to start at the bottom like this. can kind of get a first couple leaves going. And then what we're actually going to do is what's called tourneing an artichoke. So we go around like this. And I got the old trash can right by me here. I'm hitting for the most part right now. <laughs> and we're going to go kind of around like this. And uh, basically, until we get a nice... Now, if I was going to boil them, I would leave all of those leaves. Now, here's what I tell people. You see the struggle I'm having here with this knife? Tell people about the right knife for the right job. This is where a serrated knife comes in. You know, the one that you haven't used in about eight years since you've owned your knife set? It's got the teeth on there. Not only is it great for... But this is a wonderful for this kind of thing. Also, for a lot of cheeses, this knife is great, okay? So basically now, it makes now tourneying the outside of this with a paring knife much easier. So once we get all the leaves around, and we have the bottom of the artichoke, there's a reason for this madness. And then we got all the green out, now we got the white, which is called the bottom, the artichoke bottom. Now what I do is I take a little mandolin like this, and I shave the bottom of this artichoke in half. And you want to get it fairly thin, because what happens is it makes a delicious little salad. So now what I do is I take the bottoms of this thin artichoke like this into pieces, and then I put them in a bowl to get a little flavor, and I squeeze a lemon. The juice of the lemon, the acidity in the lemon is going to keep them from sort of turning brown, okay? Little salt, little lemon. I leave the lemon right in there. Okay, we're going to let those marinate. Little salt. Mm, 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 mm. Now, here's what we're going to do. Now we got that. Let them get a little flavor. Speaking about flavor, I got a little water here, and I'm going to fuse that water with a little bit of chopped garlic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know where you get your water. Where I get mine, it don't come flavored, you know? <laughs> Well, maybe here, but you got to strain it. <laughs> now, then what I'm going to do is I got that flavor going on. I'm going to add some orzo, okay, like pasta, orzo pasta, right? We're going to let that start cooking so we have a little garlicky orzo. Now, take the lemons out when we're ready to make the salad. We're going to drain this out. Mm -hmm. 
Then we're going to add this in here. Some black olives. Some parsley. Now my mom's happy. <laughs> the juice of another half lemon. Then we'll take the seeds out. <laughs> okay, seed, seed, seed. Another seed. Seed. Forget it. <laughs> okay, now we're going to just toss this. Now, a little more salt. <laughs> and some fresh ground pepper. <laughs> Me too. Okay, so if you kind of see where my mind is going here, we've got the orzo pasta happening, flavored with a little garlic. We've got this olive and artichoke salad, little lemony, salt, pepper, good thing. And uh, now what I'm going to do is start dicing the swordfish into little cubes so I can make some skewers. When we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to marinate it, and then guess what? Another notch! That's it! Hey, hey, welcome back. Shame on you if you're just joining us. Listen, when you use these wet skewers like this, not the metal ones, you want to be sure to soak them in water, at least the day before. Sorry, I didn't mean to get you there. <laughs> Got a big budget here. I'll buy you new clothes, everything. Don't worry. So then what we're going to do is we're going to skewer the swordfish. I took half yogurt, half pesto, just the regular basil pesto, mixed them together, added the cube swordfish in there, the chunks, you see? And then we're just going to kind of skewer these. So we already have the uh, artichoke and olive salad, OK? The orzo is just about done cooking. You can do this ahead of time. You should let the uh, swordfish at least marinate. And what the yogurt does, there's some, something in the yogurt that it's like a happy medicine, you know? <laughs> it's like taking a happy pill. and. It's happy. It's so light. It's barely staying in my hand here, the swordfish. So we get it all nice and skewered like that. All right, we'll do a few more. So you with me there? Yay. All right, now, let's go check on the orzo real quick. How do you know? You know, a lot of people don't cook with orzo anymore. Sad. I like it. You can do a lot of stuff to it. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Done. So now what we're going to do is drain this. But unlike pasta, I don't totally drain it. I leave some of that water in here. Show you why. I turn the heat on now. Goes great with this swordfish dish. Get the water out of there. See, and then I just use a fork like this, and I get some of that water out of there. But what I do now is when I want to add my butter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's dairy farmers, babe. Yeah. Somebody got to help them out there. <laughs> Men and women are working so hard. You know, you folks at home shouldn't feel bad. Next time you go to the grocery store, buy an extra four or five pounds of butter, will you, for God's <laughs> sakes? Yeah. Now. See, once I get the butter in there, see, I melt the butter real nice. Now, see, it's vulnerable right now. Now is when you can add flavors to it. I add a little bit of salt. <laughs> More. <laughs> My kind of girl. <laughs> now, when all that vapor is just about out there, you see that? Here's what we're going to do. We put that in a bowl. It's got nice butter flavor in here now, OK? Then here's what we're going to do. We're going to add some pine nuts to it. 
We're going to add some diced cucumber that I seeded. Some green onions. Oh, yeah, babe. A little bit of fresh basil, whatever herbs you got. Parsley. Okay? And right at the end, when it's cool, you add some feta cheese. Oh, yeah, this is some American feta cheese. And then if you need to, you can always fork a lemon and just squeeze it up like that, okay? When we come back, I'm going to show you what it all looks like, these grilled swordfish. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. in the Emerald Live Band. Welcome back. Oh, welcome back. If you're just joining us, shame on you. Emerald Lagasse here. We're saluting America's dairy farmers tonight here on Emerald Live. Yeah. We got Cliff on keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. Lewis is on the horns. Good buddy, Sir Charles on bass. Hey, how about that amazing drum riff, huh? We got Texas Teddy Thank on drums. So Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Doc Gibbs in the house. All right. So, um, we saluted first by a couple of American cheeses. We have uh, these wonderful farmers. We have Grant, uh, who's from Utah. We have Donna from South Dakota. Thank you. <laughs> and we have Miss Rita, who's from Pennsylvania. Exactly. And of course, Bill from California, who all have dairy farms. And uh, thanks to our friends with the Dairy Association, they sent them here to uh, take a day off, which is what they uh, <laughs> needed to do, which is rare. And we have made a little fondue. and. Now we're building this uh, incredible, at least I think it is, incredible swordfish dish made with some yogurt. I know that you have great buttermilk. I love yes, buttermilk. Uh, yes. Do you ever I make biscuits too. with buttermilk? Yes, I do. Oh, Pancakes? I do it all the time. I make buttermilk ice cream that's fantastic. No, oh. I've never tried it. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. <laughs> Anyhow, so what we're going to do now is I marinated, as I said earlier, the swordfish cubes, steaky fish uh, with that uh, yogurt and pesto. And now I'm going to make a, a little sauce for that as well, because we get a lot of that on the www.howdoimakeaquicksauce.com. So now we have that, and I'll show you sort of what I do to this that makes it really, really nice and simple. We'll take that orzo salad that we have. Now it's a salad, pine nuts, cucumbers. I added a little mint in here as well make it a little fresh. And so I use this as the base that, uh, oh yeah, babe. <laughs> so I use that as the base, that orzo. I wish you could smell it. <clears throat> and then I sort of take the skewers of swordfish with the tomatoes. You don't want to overcook them too much. And I kind of just put them on an angle like that. You don't want to cook them too much, then the tomatoes get all messed up and they stop popping and the fish is sad because it's overcooked. <laughs> so now we do that. Then what I do is I now take that artichoke and olive salad that we had and I put a little bit of that sort of on top of that as a little garnish like this. You see that? And uh, then just to finish it, then I come back with that yogurt sauce, and I just do a little yogurt sort of like this, and a little yogurt kind of like that, and a little yogurt sauce like this, and just a little yogurt sauce. And there you have it, folks. Okay? Beautiful. All right? Wow. 
Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when I was thinking about this show, and I was thinking about things to do, things that I even do basically at home that sort of covers the big dairy circle in my life. I mean, in between shows, we had all the kids had ice cream, right? Life would be sad without ice cream. <laughs> God. So I said, you know what? I, one of the things that I do that's pretty down home and basic is I do this cauliflower and broccoli or gratin thing. And we always forget about this or gratin thing. Uh, but without dairy farmers, there would be no or gratin because we're not only using milk or cream, but we're using cheese. So in some salted water, I blanch my cauliflower and my broccoli pretty al dente, okay, which means you can still snap it, okay? Be hard to stick a fork in it. Then <laughs> you melt down some butter. And I was thinking about all the seafood gumbos that I have made over the years, which is with a butter and flour roux. How sad it would be without butter. So I'm starting with a roux, folks. And equal parts of flour and butter. And I want to cook that roux. You see that I'm using a little whisk to start with. Now, when you're working with roux, there's basically a few different stages. There's the uh, sort of blonde stage. Then there's sort of the medium stage, which is kind of like peanut butter. And then there's the dark stage, which they use for a lot of those rich stews and gumbos, particularly in Louisiana cooking. So I'm going to take this really to the, uh, the blonde stage. You've got to steer when you're working with roux a lot. Then what I'm going to do is in a buttered casserole, I've I drained it really good. I'm just going to put an assortment, doesn't matter where it goes what, of this wonderful cauliflower and broccoli. Then what I do <clears throat> is this. <clears throat> I take a little bit of salt first to re-season it. And a little bit of pepper, especially for Miss Reader over there. Yeah. All right, now what we're going to do is this. When the roux gets to that blonde stage, going to turn the heat down a little bit and actually make a bechamel sauce or a cream sauce is what it's called. So we're going to add this. Now, when you're working with a roux or other thickening agents, it'll never be at its full thickening power until it comes to a boil or a simmer. So now I go back to the whisk, and I'm whisking this. Now, even these great farmers that I have here tonight with us, they'll tell you, I don't know where you get your milk, but where we get ours, it don't come seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to add a pinch of cayenne pepper and a nice pinch of salt. Let it come up to temperature. We're going to take a classic cream sauce or bechamel sauce, turn it into a cheese sauce when we come back on Emerald Live. Stick around, we'll be right back. Talk to you. Salute. Now, I want to show you this. Something that's very simple, as I said before we left. Listen, when you got this cream stuff on your stove, unless you want to, want to redecorate your house, be very, very careful. You just can't, like, walk away. If it spills, it's very dangerous, okay? Butter, cream, milk. Now, as I told you, once it comes up to temperature, okay, you can see now, once it comes up to a boil, now we know what and how thick this is going to be when you're using a roux. Okay, it ain't going to be any thicker than that. Now, see, he coats a spoon. And don't go rushing it. Everybody know they're just going to cook. They turn the stove on, right? 
you gotta use these things here. Use your knob. <laughs> you know, medium, medium, low, high, you know. Now, we're gonna take a basic cream sauce now with good American cheddar cheese. And now we're gonna make it into a cheese sauce. And what I do is you turn the heat down, get a spoon, and just start spooning it in like this till it gets nice and smooth. So now we take a basic mother sauce, which is a cream sauce, bechamel, and now we've turned it into a compound sauce, or which is a cheese sauce, or gratin. Okay, now, once we get it all incorporated in there nice and smooth, okay, now here's what we do. We pour that sauce right over the broccoli and cauliflower, okay, because we know how thick it is now. We just pour that on there. Oh, yeah, babe. Okay? I'd like to have that poured all over me, too, you know? <laughs> now, well, let's face it, Teddy. I love that, too. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do, take a little essence like this with some breadcrumbs, and I'll show you a little secret. Shh. A little olive oil. Instead of them being dry, just give them a little moisture like this. And then what we'll do is we just sprinkle that. Oh, yeah, man. Oh. Now, 350 degrees. Folks, here's the great thing. Holidays are coming around, all that stuff. Birthdays coming around, anniversaries, whatever. Sundays. You can make this ahead of time, the day before. Take it out, let it get at room temperature. When you're ready, it's already uh, somewhat cooked, like 450 degrees. I don't think so. That's a little bit too high for me, because it's already cooked. The sauce is cooked. 350, you want to wait till it gets nice and gooey, the bubbles. Oh, yes. <sighs> Speaking of, you like butterscotch pudding? Yes. Well, I have a combination of cream and milk in here. Then what we're going to do is this. We're going to now take some brown sugar with that butter and cream mixture. Little pinch of salt. You know why. <laughs> Turn the heat up just a little bit here. <laughs> and then uh, I got this wooden spoon. What we're going to do is we're just going to sort of let the brown sugar dissolve with the milk and cream mixture. Okay, now. It's like making an old-fashioned pudding. So we've got the milk mixture now. Now, three egg yolks. We're going to add cornstarch to the egg yolks. That's going to be what's thickening it. You want to mix the egg yolks with the cornstarch. I tell people, listen, they go, is he nuts? <laughs> well, maybe. Here's the thing. What I want to do is I want to temper this but I don't want to get like a bunch of lumps and curds and stuff. So once I get my cream and milk scalded like this, I dissolve the sugar, what I do is I come over here halfway. And then I temper the egg yolks nice, nice, so that they don't scramble. At least we pray that they don't. <laughs> hey, if they do, that's what they make strainers for. Now, once you get it all tempered, which this looks pretty good already. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to take, that's some tempering music by Doc Gibbs. <laughs> we're going to add this back in here, and then we're going to cook it to make a cream, like a pastry cream. What I do for a little richness, and because the dairy farm is, you know, my friends, you know, I add a little butter in there just to, you know, just to kick it up a little bit. And then what I do is I add scotch. Oh, love that. All right. You imagine a cow on scotch? Wow. A little vanilla. Okay, so what we do now, folks, is we're going to cook this. It's going to get a little thicker as we cook it. Then, as you can see, I got a strainer just in case some of those eggs beat up like that. When we come back, I'm going to show you what it looks like in that wonderful broccoli and cauliflower au gratin. Stick around. We'll be right back.
All right. Well, welcome back. Emeril Lagasse saluting America's dairy farmers tonight. I want to thank all of the dairy farmers, all our friends there for coming by. Butterscotch pudding is what we're making. Cream. Look, I strain it no matter what. Whatever kind of pastry cream, whether I'm making coconut cream pie, banana cream pie, I strain it. And that's what you want to do. You strain it like this. You see the difference of how smooth it is? Now, <laughs> one of those pies, be careful, ladies. They just let them out yesterday. <laughs> they, uh, you strain it, you get it nice and smooth. Then what I like to do is, rather than three-step it, you know, because one of those old-fashioned puddings, you gotta, once you do this, you got to put plastic over it so it doesn't get that, you know, it gets like a skin thing. Well, I don't make this stuff up. All right, so then what I do is I take that and I put it inside of these glasses that you probably rarely use. So I put them in there. Then I put the plastic over it, okay? And uh, then I just put it in the icebox. Now, I'm going to take some heavy cream, whisk it up a little bit, a little sugar. Then when it starts getting stiff, I'm going to just sort of just kind of add a little scotch in there, make it like a little scotch cream. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, why don't we go check on that wonderful... Oh, yeah, babe. There's where that cauliflower and broccoli or gratin. There we have that. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, look at that, huh? Oh, thank you. Well, have a little bit of that. How's the swordfish? Delicious. That that orzo thing, huh? Woo! Oh, wonderful. I know. Here you go. Okay, Try you. that. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the scotch cream. <laughs> <laughs> once the cream, once the cream gets stiff, you don't want to over whip it because, as they'll tell you, it'll turn to butter. So once it gets stiff, here's what I do. I turn this down. I add just a little bit, oops, of scotch in there. All right, so now I've got the scotch cream. That works for me. The thing about these old-fashioned puddings, right, is that, uh, you know, that people need to make them more, the chocolate and banana and all that stuff. What I do to finish it up, see, I love this that you can do the next day. See? You just take them out like this, see, and then you just take the plastic wrap off like this so there's no skin. Let's see what else we got. See, we got a real live working refrigerator here. Sometimes you just can't get any mint. Not that time of the year. That's okay. Improvise. All right, so to finish this up now, what I do is I take that there, and then I take some of that wonderful scotch cream. Okay, a little bit of that scotch cream like that, and just a little bit more scotch cream. And Reed is saying, bring it on, baby, bring it on. And just a little bit more of that scotch cream. Is that enough, Rita? And then right at the end, you just bam, 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 bam. Just kind of bam it like that. I want to thank Bill from California, Rita from Pennsylvania. I want to thank Donna all the way from South Dakota, my friend from Utah. All the American dairy farmers, we love you, baby. I'm Emma Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody.